So, this is the game. And we are, since it's Wednesday, it's the random game of the week. And we are playing Dear Esther Landmark Edition. And let's just start with the lighthouse. Um, so, so this game is is a um, it's just a visual game. Dear Esther, I have lost track of how long I have been here and how many visits I have made overall. Certainly, the landmarks are now so familiar to me that I have to remind myself to actually see the forms and shapes in front of me. I could stumble blind across these rocks, the edges of these precipices, without fear of missing my step and plummeting down to sea. Besides, I have always considered that if one is to fall, it is critical to keep one's eyes firmly open. So, as I said, it's just a visual game. Um, there's a story, of course, though it has a vibe of some kind of horror and the first time you play it you could get scared like that right there with the girl who wasn't there and then moved that was scary and um, stuff like that happens and stuff like that happens but that's it. Most of the time. Let's just leave it at that and get going. There is um there is some stuff to do around here. But but there's there's no quests, there's no No one telling you where to go. And there's most definitely stuff I don't know what I was trying to say I had an idea but 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 got lost so as you can see there is um there is a path there it's it's rather linear to be honest it is rather linear so even though there's no quest markers uh, or stuff like that you can easily find your way the only thing is that if you play this Late, late at night alone you might want to just reassure yourself that this is not a horror game though once again it does rather much have the feel of one especially if you have the um especially if it's stuck out it it's it's rather creepy and if you turn down the, the the light those islands in the distance i am sure are nothing more than relics of another time sleeping giants somnambulist gods laid down for a final dreaming i wash the sand from my lips and grip my wrist ever more tightly my shaking arms will not support my fading diaries and then of course as you can see or hear there are a a story that you can follow by just playing the game. You get some information about what's going on. And um, yeah, that's basically it. It's a... Um, oh, what's the name? Oh, the word. I, I know I said visual a couple times and, and I still mean it's a visual game. The mount is clearly the focal point of this landscape. It almost appears so well placed as to be artificial. I find myself easily slipping into the delusional state of ascribing purpose, deliberate motive to everything here. Was this island formed during the moment of impact? When we were torn loose from our moorings, and the seatbelts cut motorway lanes into our chests and shoulders, did it first break surface then? I guess atmospheric is the word is is a good word for it if I could pronounce it right because I would actually say that's basically what it is. It's a game where you have to. When someone had died oh, or was dying, 
who were so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice. They cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boats and notice end aid or impose a cordon of protection and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. So I have played this game before <clears throat> for around 10 minutes and then that's it then I then I turn it off and then now about six years later I think somewhere in that area I quote directly I played it again a motley lot with little to recommend them. I have now spent three days in their company that is I fear enough for any man not born amongst them Despite their tedious inclination to quote scripture, they seem to me the most godforsaken of all the inhabitants of the Outer Isles. Indeed, in this case, the very gravity of that term, forsaken by God, seems to find its very apex. It appears to me that Donnelly, too, found those who wander this shoreline to be adrift from any chance of redemption. Did he include himself in that, I wonder? As I said, 10 minutes, turned it off, and now six years later, I played it again. There are four chapters in this game, and I might actually just the next four Wednesdays play one each time, or I might just play the first one today, depending on how long it takes to complete. I don't know why it's... Dearest. Oh, come on. <laughs> I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. The responsibility had made him old. Like us, He'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I don't know why it's called Landmark Edition, because I think it's kind of the same as the first one, or the, the normal I threw life. my arms wide and the cliff opened out before me, making this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the Bothy on the Mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island, where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. So as I said, this is actually a remastered edition, I think, of the first game. Well, of the game, I guess. And... Well, I think it's it's kind of the same, but let's just see where this leads us. They, I don't think I can find anything further beyond here. So, this was my or uh, the the teller's storyteller's home. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's a way further from here. So I guess let's just turn around and walk back. Let's do that. I think at the start there was a another way. Instead of going above, you could go below at some point. Also, that seems like a cave up there. I don't think I can get around here. I think the water is too high. Oh, I can. Or maybe not. I died. 
not quite, though it's close. Yeah, that just makes sense, right? You can get into the water, but can't see a thing. I don't think there's any way over there as of yet. Oh, there's a path this way. Let's follow that. But as I said, atmospheric. I still don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but I think that's a very good word for this game. It's all about the music, the sound, the story, and the landscape. And though it, it's it's at times a bit, just just walking around can be a bit boring, I guess. But still, it gets a certain feeling into you when you're playing the game. Let's get back on the I stood in the center of the sun, and the solar radiation cooked my heart from the inside. My teeth will curl and my fingernails fall off into my pockets like loose change. If I could stomach, I'd eat, but all I seem capable of is salt water. With the livestock still here, I could turn feral and gorge. I'm as emaciated as a body on a slab, opened up for a premature source of death. I've rode to this island in a heart without a bottom, all the bacteria of my gut rising up to sing to me. I think if you if you went from down there you could got get this way around. In this book. I don't I know it's in the middle of the game, but I don't actually think there are any special controls. I don't use a controller. Um you just have WASD and the mouse. So I can't activate the book, but it is in fact there. Okay, let's move on and see what's in store for us through this this pathway. The sky seems rather realistic, to be honest. Actually, I just realized the sky is really, really well made. The clouds are moving fast, and there's a constant sound of wind. And though there is not much space in here, there should still be wind going through, and that there is. I guess, dear Esther. I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. And although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimeter using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. I guess that was chapter one. And I'm actually contemplating if I should just end to I think I'll end it here. And then maybe just do the next, f well, today and the next three Wednesdays, I will just do a, a chapter a week. Since it's still technically a random man, I don't know, but but I think I would, I would like to play this through, so let's do that. So in the next week, I will start on chapter two, which is the one we're in now. But this is a bit of a different game than normal, so if you liked this kind of video and this kind of game, please leave a comment in the comment section and. Maybe you also subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you want to. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.